All right, my friends, welcome to another video lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be discussing camera syncing, taking interview footage that we've shot with two different cameras and audio that we've recorded with an external audio recorder, a Zoom H6, and bringing all of that into the timeline in Premiere and syncing it up so that the audio that we're hearing is synchronized to the video that we're seeing. So when our interview subject says something, the words that we hear are synchronized to the movement of his mouth. So if we dive into the project panel here, you can see I've got the interview footage here from two different cameras, a Panasonic G9 and a Panasonic GH5. Got both those clips here. And then we've also got two different audio sources that were routed to our Zoom H6. We've got a boom and a lav. So we need to get all of this into the timeline and synced up. Now you can see in the information panel here that our footage was shot at 24 frames per second and that it's actually 4K. We've got two slightly different sizes of 4K here, 3840 by 2160 and 4096 by 2160. This will allow us much more flexibility in the post-production process when it comes to framing our interview subject if we edit in a regular HD timeline, that is 1920 by 1080. Because the frame size of our media is so much larger than the frame size that we're editing in, we'll be able to zoom in without quality loss, be able to reframe our subject in a very flexible manner. So in order to do this, we need to create a sequence that has that regular HD frame size, 1920 by 1080. So to do that, we're gonna go up to File, New, and choose Sequence, or of course do what the cool kids do and use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control N. And that launches this big scary window here which basically has a whole bunch of different sequence presets, frame sizes, frame rates, that are based on different types of cameras and media that you'll commonly find in the industry. We're gonna go down to XDCAM HD 422. Twirl that down and then go to the 1080p preset area there and twirl that down. And then the one we're interested in because our media is at 24 frames, we're gonna use the 1080p 24 setting here for 24 frames per second. I'm gonna click on that, and then we're gonna go down to the sequence name and name it. And we're gonna call this interview 2020 underscore my name. You of course type your name and today's date, October 10th. Hit OK, and we've got a brand new sequence created. Now, it's of course located outside the sequence bin, so we're gonna drag it in there, and there we go. So this will serve as our main sequence for the project. And you can see it's got the regular HD frame size here, 1920 by 1080. And the 24 frames per second frame rate. So now in order to get all of this media into the timeline and synced up, we're just gonna begin dragging it in. And the GH5 is the main camera in this interview. If you look at it, it's got the relatively straight on wide shot and the G9 has the alternate angle here off to the side a bit. So I'm gonna take the G5 and drag it in first because it's the main camera. And I'm gonna pull it on to video and audio one. Now it says this clip does not match the sequences settings. Change the sequence to match the clip settings? No, what we wanna do is force this media into a smaller frame size to give us that flexibility to reframe. That's why this is coming up because the frame size of the sequence is regular HD, 1920, 1080, and the media is much larger than that, 4K. So I'm gonna say keep existing settings, meaning keep the sequence the way it is, and we'll just put this larger media in there anyway. And you can see now 
that I've done that, here's the actual size of the media and when it's put into this smaller frame size, it of course appears larger. And that's exactly what we want. Now I'm gonna bring the G9 in as well, drag it in above and below, so it's on video two and audio two. And then I'm gonna bring in the boom track of my H6 here and the lav track for my H6. So basically we have four different sources here. We've got the G9, we've got the G5, we've got the boom from the recorder and the lav from that same external recorder. So if I play these right now, they're not gonna sound very good. It's gonna be kind of jumbled up. It's because all the audio isn't synced up yet. Plus we've got the issue where the frame size of our media is a lot larger than the frame size of our sequence. And I wanna make sure you guys understand how much bigger it is and how this actually works. So what I'm gonna do is click on one of the clips here, the G9, and then I'm gonna to go to the effect controls and click on the word motion. And then I'm gonna reduce the view size on our program panel. I'm gonna go all the way down to 10%. And you can see, here's the actual size of the media. This blue line is the actual frame size of what was recorded. And this, the viewable area here, is the frame size of our sequence. So this gives us great flexibility in being able to move this thing around, reframe our subject any way we want, or make him a variety of sizes depending on our needs. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna to return to our regular fit view. Now what I'm gonna do is set our media to the frame size so that we can at least see the whole thing before we go zooming in and moving things around to reframe it. So I'm gonna select both of the cameras, and then I'm gonna right click on them and choose set to frame size, not scale to frame size, set to frame size. And that actually resizes the media into the viewable area of our sequence. It doesn't change the inherent size of the media. It's still 4K, we still have all that freedom. We can just see the whole thing at once right now. So now back to our jumbled audio here. In order to fix this, we're gonna select everything in the timeline. You can either lasso it like this or Command or Control A to select all. And then I'm going to right click on it and choose Synchronize. And what Premiere is going to do is analyze the waveform, the audio itself, and drag everything in the timeline into place so that it's all in sync with each other. Pretty cool function. So as soon as you click on that, it launches this Synchronize Clips dialog box. We're gonna choose audio as the source for that. Track channel one is just fine. Click OK and watch the clips now, they will move. Goes through and processes and boom, they moved. Now when I press play, let's see what we hear. Uh, it hosted sessions every Tuesday inside of Classroom One carpet, which is probably not the best idea. All right, so everything's in sync now. Now we get to choose which audio is the best. And I'm gonna do this by soloing the various tracks. Now the camera audio isn't gonna be as great because the microphones are on the cameras themselves at a pretty decent distance away from our subject's mouth. So if I solo the GH5 audio here, play that. And uh, I worked at it, but in high school. Sounds very hollow. There's a lot of reverb in it because the microphone is nowhere near his mouth. Let's try the G9. I didn't see a lot of progress because I just want. Same thing there. So even though the signal strength is decent, it's around negative 12 here. It's just not very good. So next we're gonna try the boom audio on A3. Solo that. Pull this back a little bit. Side of a classroom on carpet, which is probably not the best idea. And uh, I worked at it. Sounds much better. Now let's try the lav. But in high school, I didn't see a lot of progress because I just wanted to do the- That sounds excellent. So the two camera audio sources are not even worth using. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of those. 
So right now we have link selection turned on here. So if I click on the audio for a camera, I'm also selecting the video. So I wanna delete just the audio and leave the video here. So I'm gonna turn link selection off, click on the audio and delete it. Click on the audio for the other camera, delete it. And I'm gonna take my two better sources and move them up. Turn off solo. And now I've got the lab and boom to choose from. I'm gonna do a backflip and I'm like, I thought that had to be done with wire. There's still a lot of reverb, I think, coming from the boom mic here. So I'm gonna solo that. In Hollywood. <laughs> and realizing that it could be. Yeah, you can hear a lot of the room in there. That's because the boom mic is above his head and it's picking up what's happening in the room as well. So I'm gonna try soloing just the lav here. Done by a high school student. I wanted to get into it. Sounds a lot better. It's the highest quality source we have. It's closer to his mouth. You hear less echo in the room. So I think this should be our primary source. Now I'm not going to delete the boom mic because I want to use it as a backup just in case something happens with the lav. Like we've talked about in another video lesson where maybe our subject actually hits the lav mic by accident or there's some rustling of the clothes or something like that. We want to keep this boom mic available as a backup source just in case we need it. So what I'm going to do is click on it and disable it. There's a couple different ways to do that. This is just like muting it except we don't have to turn on the channel mute. I can right click and turn off the enable function here and now it's off. You can see it's darker indicating that it's not actually an active source right now. So if I play and I practice, I talk to it. All we hear is the laugh. Now another way to do this is of course to use a keyboard shortcut. So I'll re-enable it, select it and I'm going to use shift command or shift control E and that will also disable that track of audio. And that actually works on video as well. You can turn on and off video using that same keyboard shortcut or right clicking and choosing the enable function. Pretty cool. So because I like the lav better than the boom, I'm actually gonna move the lav up to the first audio track and then keep the boom just underneath that. And there we go. We have our two cameras and the best audio source from our external recorder synced up and ready to start cutting in the timeline. All right, my friends, that about does it for this video lesson on camera syncing. I'll see you in the next one.